No longer able to pump enough oil from the land to satiate the world's hunger for fuel, the giant oil companies are now drilling into the seabed, anchoring their platforms in 35 meters of water. Inevitably, the day of fury comes, and the oil we would burn inside our engines catches fire when we least expect it. The frantic need for oil has taxed man's engineering genius to its utmost and led to the most colossal ships ever dreamed of, the super tankers. Enormous floating oil tanks. They are longer than three football fields laid end to end, wider than a football field is long. Among the largest of the great sea-going monsters is the Amoco Cadiz, which weighs almost a quarter of a million tons without cargo. If it were stood on end, the giant ship would stand higher than New York's skyscraper, the Chrysler Building. Fully loaded, the Amoco Cadiz headed for Rotterdam. On the last and most perilous leg of the voyage, the Amoco Cadiz enters the English Channel. Twelve hours later, after battling mountainous seas and howling winds, the Amoco Cadiz loses power and drifts onto the jagged rocks of Portsal. The Amoco Cadiz splits in two, and 220,000 tons of thick black crude oil spill into the sea. And a worsening gale blows for days, spreading oil over 200 kilometers of Brittany coastline. Beaches and boats are fouled, fisheries and seaweed are smeared by the oily mess the French call mousse. The Amoco Cadiz formed enough mousse to fill 17,700 railroad tank cars, forming a train that would stretch from Rome to Naples. In places it was piled six centimeters thick and even after six months of cleaning efforts, most of it remains in the sea and clings to the rocks on the beach. For three weeks, the Amoco Cadiz lay stricken, bleeding oil onto the Brittany rocks. In desperation, the French Navy bombed the ruptured tanker, hoping to break up the oil that still streamed from her bowels. In all, the French government spent more than $100 million simply to clean up the mess. The cost to the fragile marine ecology of the estuary may never be known. And the various claims against the owners of the Amoco Cadiz total almost $2 billion. Despite the vastness of the sea, most ships crowd into narrow corridors for their passage. They run into one another with alarming frequency. On a warm March morning, under the rusting guns of the ancient Puerto Rican fortress of El Moro, the Liberian tanker Ocean Eagle went aground. Before the horrified eyes of tourists strolling about the old fort, the tanker began to break apart. The crippled ship lay impaled for days on the coral reef, blocking the entrance to the harbor leaking oil, blackening beaches, until finally the stricken ship blew up and sank. 